and welcome back to the workshop. In today's episode, we're going to be working again on the Baudry power hammer. Now it's put back together now, but that's because of time travel. Where we're gonna start on today's project is getting the main flywheel back together. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about what's happened so far. So far, one of the bolts on the anvil broke off. That's something we're gonna have to fix. The anvil itself has a little bit too much space in between the frame and the body of the anvil, so we're gonna have to fix that. And the linkage is out of square, so I went down to Florida, turned up a new bushing with Adam Booth, and last episode we got that fit back together, and now it's time to see if that solved our problems. Now there is one thing that we need to take care of before we put the shaft and crank disc uh, into the flywheel, and for that, uh, I'm gonna have to meet you guys up at the house. You're probably wondering why I brought you here today. That is to talk about today's sponsor, which is Factor. Factor is a never frozen, chef prepared meal subscription service. That means that you're getting meals delivered from them straight to your door that haven't gone through the process of freezing and becoming gross and then unfreezing for you to eat them while they're gross. They stay fresh, they stay delicious. They have tons of different options between keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, vegetarian, and all sorts of other options. And they make it super simple to have a wide variety, 34 plus chef prepared, dietitian approved meals available per week. That means you're not gonna be eating the same thing over and over again. You can have healthy, tasty meals without it being repetitive. It also saves you trips to the grocery store, saves you the cleanup. So if you guys are interested in having delicious meals delivered right to your door, head to factor75.com and use code WILLSTELTER50 for 50% off your first Factor box. Now let's get back to the hammer time. Well, we lost a shot of getting the shaft back into the frame, but it went smoothly thanks to the chain hoist. I then got the super heavy flywheel started back on the end of the shaft, and that's where we pick up with the scooching of the wheel onto the shaft using a ratchet strap for pressure and soft hammers to get things moving. It was slow going, but it went on straight and tight just like it should have. Well, I got the hammer linkage put back together and here's what it looks like. So here we have the crank pin. The crank pin has a T-nut on the end that's inside of the crank disc. That comes all the way out to here and it's threaded on the end for this giant nut. So this giant nut is clamped onto this washer and this washer hits the end of this bushing. This has a T-shaped cross section that's hollow in the middle. So the crank pin goes through there all the way out to here. This washer hits the end of that and in turn it pinches. So we're able to pull tension from this, this plate here uh, to the T-nut and so it's pinching on the face of the crank disc. And that's what means that this thing doesn't just come flying off. Now inside the pitman here and inside of the bronze bushing is the outside diameter of our cast iron washer and then inside of that is the crank pin. So if you were to cut this in half right now, you'd have cast iron from the pitman, bronze, that's the inside the cast iron, then the cast iron of the washer and then the crank pin itself. So there's a lot of pieces in here and if anything there is off, then it's not gonna be so good. Well, the pitman of the hammer, which has a bronze bushing inside of it, was sitting at an angle which pinched at the bottom really bad and the hammer wouldn't move because of it. So almost immediately after getting it put back together, all of the linkage came right back apart. That bronze situation is a real problem. So we're gonna have to re-bush the pitman. That means we'll have to get out the old bronze, turn down the cast iron bushing that sits inside of it, and then turn down a new piece of bronze and install it. Uh, the next step now is to take out my little oiling port thing. The mixture of dry ice and denatured alcohol will cool off the pieces to negative 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And since bronze moves more with heat than cast iron does, it should loosen up and allow it to come free. And while we wait for that to cool off, let's start machining on the cast iron bushing. So here's where we're at. I don't have a great way to measure how round this is. I have to use these calipers. I then have to use an inside measuring micrometer. This fella and kind of measure out the spacing. I'm fairly certain it's a little bit out of round because I think it sat in the same place for a long time. I know that there is wear along this piece. It's thicker in the center than it is on either side. I can almost, maybe I'm just imagining it, but see it visually. So what I'm doing is I've got it squared up now where we're within a thousandth of an inch of having this true. I want to take off as little material as possible to give us a little bit more room to work with for our bronze material.
Look at that. Mmm. Delicious. Negative four. That's it. What, what about on the inside? Negative 15. That's not nearly cold enough. The next thing that we need to do while we're continuing to wait for that to cool down is to make a boring bar for the lathe. Adam used a giant boring bar to bore out the inside of the main bushing. We need a smaller one to be able to bore out the inside of this one. That being said, I don't have one, but they're not too terribly hard to make. The plan is to cut off a chunk of this 4140 bar to square up the four sides just a little bit, just enough so that we have something to kind of clamp on here in our tool post holder. Then we will drill two different holes in it. One is the hole that the piece of high speed steel that we're going to use as our cutter will sit inside. Uh, and that is going to be a 11 32nd hole for a piece of 3 8 inch carbide. We'll mill flat a spot and then drill down and tap a hole for a set screw that will hold our piece of high speed steel in there nice and secure and square with the bar. With the boring bar wrapped up, we can move back to trying to get the bronze out of the pit. It's moving. Oh yeah, there's a decent, decent amount. That is a rough surface finish. Now that we've got the old bronze out, we can get our dimensions and turn the new one from 660 bearing bronze. With the dimensional machining done on the bushing, we need to poke the oil hole in the top and cut our groove before going to install it. We've got our groove cut. I definitely didn't slip at all. So we're gonna cool it off now and, 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 and throw it back in the pitman. All right, our bearing is now at about negative 100 degrees, which I think will be enough. Oh my gosh, like a glove, get that sucker lined up. Look at that. Wunderbar. <laughs> nice. I reckon we ought to put her back in the hammer. So we got the hammer put back together and things were still binding up. Now, after a quick call with my mentor, Salem Straub, who has a 300 pound hammer, we talked about it and the simple fact of the matter is that somewhere on here, something is binding. And when you start replacing new pieces into a hammer that has lots of wear, lots of slop, other things that previously were working because there is so much looseness in it, stop working. So I think that the culprit is this flange right here, pulling things out of square and keeping things tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this, which I've already turned, as square as possible, and then I will cut off this face very lightly, then we'll flip it around and indexing off of that face, 
we will then cut the back side and cut a little bit off of there, and then we'll turn a hair off of uh, this side as well, just to keep things a little bit tighter. That makes me feel better. Now, we're gonna go into super fast time speed and put the hammer back together. To get the drive system reassembled, we have to put the drive pulley back on its shaft, the tension pulley arm and assembly back together, the brake assembly on the back, and get the belt reinstalled. this hammer to work is the fact that there are springs in here. If this was one solid connection, then it, there wouldn't be any variability. The, the hammer would travel down to the same point and travel up to the same point. But the fact that the faster it goes, uh, the faster the ram whips, and these springs allow it to whip up and down, and that gives it power. Unfortunately, it's currently binding up when I try and run the ram. So the only thing that has loosened it up and allowed it to move up and down is by loosening these set screws here, which loosen the spring pressure, which mean that these rollers down here have a little bit more room to roll. That tells me something. I think that that might be the problem, but I'm not totally sure. Now the other thing that we can try, and we'll, we'll try this before going to the extreme measure of pulling everything apart again, is moving it up a little bit more on the crank disc. So the farther out it is, the harder it is for it to move, the farther in it is towards the center, the easier it is for it to move. And the reason for that is because of science. We're gonna bring this fella about even down there. We want it to do diddly a lot, not diddly squat. Let's hope that that's tight enough. predictable outcome. Hmm. Here's the dealio. It was turning over okay. It still had very poor control and the ram was too loose because I had loosened the springs to see if it was the tracks on the inside. And I feel pretty confident in saying that I think that it might be that, which sucks. Well, it means that we have to basically pull the spring arms out and, and then pull our our springs out uh, and then regrind them. Sounds like a problem for tomorrow, Will. <laughs> Am I right? That sounded like a joke, but in reality, the episode is over. <laughs> uh, no, we got an awful lot done on the hammer. Uh, I am really happy that it's finally coming back together and at least it's moving, uh, even, even if it's poorly. Definitely, my skills have been tested in trying to get everything stuck back together, uh, but this should be a relatively doable process. My rollers are still turning in there, that's good. Uh, everything seems to be in line up here, that's good. The other thing that I think we may need to do is we might need to reline the brake back there. Sure. This is the original material that came on it, and I think that it might just be pretty dang crusty. We might also end up adding a counterweight onto the end of this treadle so that when you step down, uh, not only does it tighten that and pull that, but it would also be pulling up on another weight, uh, which would help the brake get a little bit tighter and it could give us a little bit better control. So with that, we've got a couple things to work on for the next episode. Thank you guys so much for following along. I really appreciate it. Thank you to our patrons. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring today's episode. Uh, with that, I will see you guys on the next one. Smudge it.